Hi there, and welcome to Age Workshop. As the title suggests, this is going to be an improvement as to the way you adjust the angle on the compound slide on the WM180 lathe. Now, it's a beginner's improvement or a newbies to the lathe improvement. I'd probably recommend that if you buy one of these lathes, then it's probably high up on the priority list of you doing it. I've had the lathe quite a while and done many, many projects and eventually I've got to the stage where I've said, you know what, I've had enough of this and I'm going to do the improvement. Let me show you how it stands at the moment and why I wish to improve it. So as the compound slide stands at the moment, to adjust the rotational angle, you have to wind it right back to reveal the two screws. And I'll do this in real time. As you can see, it's well well back indeed so let's keep going could put an electric drill on the end of this i suppose and wind it off but uh, i mean it, you're talking way back beyond its normal sort of working positions of travel where you would uh, be using it for cutting and what have you it's a little bit grubby in there and as you can see the two screws are arriving out of the bottom so to make any adjustments You'd have to loosen the two screws, rotate it to the angle you wish, and again with the carriage right back, it fouls on the hand wheel. Let's just wind it forward a bit. Adjust it to the angle you want. Now, if you were to lock it down, you know, say an approximate angle set with a protractor, something like that, and then you wish to clock it in to a certain amount of, uh, you know, thou per inch on the outside, so to speak. You've got to wind it all the way back again, and if it's out, you've got to wind it all the way back again. So, my thinking, as you've seen with sort of many larger lathes, they have a recess in the side, um, a couple of captive bolts in a rotating track, and you simply do up the two nuts, one on either side, and you don't need to do all this wind it all the way back and forth stuff. I have an idea. Um, it's not all my own idea. I have seen somebody do it, not on this particular lathe, but on another lathe of another manufacturer and what have you, but with a similar sort of problem. I shall show you what my plan is to repair this. So first of all, having wound it all the way back, let's just loosen these two screws off altogether and just remove the compound slide and you can see how it works at the moment. I'll get those two little bolts. So you have a rotating plate in the bottom. And when you bolt down using the two bolts, it pulls this plate up, pulls the compound down, sandwiches the two together and locks it in whatever position you lock this down in. Which, yes, it does work and it does do the job. And I have, you know, set it at very, very accurate angles. But it's an absolute pain winding it all the way back and forth. So my thinking is to machine a rebate in the back of here to a diameter, which I haven't decided on yet. I've got a fair bit of meat to play with, probably. Let's have a look. Let's get a rule on it. Excuse me leaning in the shop. I've got, yeah, let's say 8mm to play with uh, before I start intruding in the thread. And it's actually around 10 mil to the thread there. So let's say I had 8 mil to play with so that I don't, uh, when I bore this out, break into the threads, which are purely drilled and tapped through this block at this end. So I'm going to have a rebated hole in there, parallel. A tapped hole in from the side. Say I was going 8, then it would be 4 mil up, maybe with an M6, something like that, maybe 5 mil up. In through that side, through into that bore. And the same on that side. If I were to replace this disc with a disc that comes up through the hole and then has perhaps a 45 degree taper perhaps, maybe 30 degree taper, what would happen? That disc would stay still in the bottom. This would then rotate on the part that's sticking up into the rebate. And if I tighten the screws up onto probably some brass plugs in the bottom, the screws would push against the side of this taper, pulling the block down from either side, 
and locking it in position. I'll probably have a couple of little plugs in the bottom of the holes with a matching angle on them. So you just loosen them off. Those plugs will rotate on the taper. And when you tighten up the grub screws on either side, it'll clamp those two plugs against the taper, pulling it all down, pulling this up, that sort of idea again, and lock it off. And of course the advantage would be, you don't need to wind it all the way back, you just undo the two grub screws, one either side, loosen them off, rotate it to your position, tighten them back up again. So that's the plan. So I suppose, now that we have a plan, let's go about making it. So I need to start by winding the table completely off its slide. And obviously because I've modified the guard and it's way further back, the guard's not going to be in my way at the very back. So that's completely off the threads. The key's kept in there on its gibbs. Let's push it all the way off. And there we are, that's my carriage removed. Or my cross slide removed. It does actually give me the opportunity to have a good clean in here. As you can see, the little pickup is here for the DRO and I'll give all this a nice clean while we're at it so there's a the little blighter popped him out the bottom uh, circular disc with a shoulder two step heights we don't know what they are yet let's start off by doing a sketch and I did a quick measure when it was pushed right up and I'm looking for this diameter this top face to be yeah, sort of point 0.1 below the surface of this to allow it room to pull up tight. So, let's start by measuring it up and doing a little sketch. I'm not going to be ridiculously fussy with this. So as you can see, that's it in profile. So the major diameter, 38.02. I bet that's 38 mil. So we'll call it 38. And the minor diameter, 31.85, 31.9, I bet that was supposed to be 32, or the hole's 32. We'll call it 31.9, and we'll do a bit of fitting. 31.9, a diameter. Right, the bottom height. Three point five two that side. Let's see. Three point four. Three point four five. Three point five five. Three point four eight. I bet that was three and a half mil. So this one, three point five mil. And the overall, I bet that was supposed to be in seven. 6.99, yeah. So 3.5 equal about. So we know what we've got now. I'm not going to need the two holes in it. I'm not going to need the dowel pin in the middle because the tool post is going to run on the diameter I machine as a dowel. So I think that's pretty much it. That's all the information I need off this. So when I come to replicate it, it's going to be the same again. Let's just sketch it in here. That sort of idea. I'm trying to do this off shot here so I'm out of the way. We'll probably have a little parallel bit. Then we're going to have a taper out to a larger diameter. To a height, which we don't yet know. But we know that can be maximum of 8 mil. Somewhere down in the tool post, we're going to have grub screws coming in and some little plugs with that sort of shape on and then some grub screws. That sort of idea. And it's all going to pull together. I think we'll have a little bit of parallel sticking about the base. And then we'll 45 degrees it out to make that shape of a plug. Of course, another way I could do this would be to just make the plug on the top put a dowel hole in its center put two bolt holes in it 
and bolt these two directly together to make it absolutely solid. And I think I may want a little parallel bit on the top. I think that might be a better idea. So I can leave that in place. I can bolt that on. Bore out the bottom of my tool post or my compound and bolt my tapered wedge directly onto it using that. Let's have a think about this. Would I have room to counterbore those two screws? Let's have a look at the thickness. Well, four and a half. So if I counterbore those in to dead flush, maybe a little bit below, that's still going to leave me three and a half mil of parallel to clamp it down with. I'll probably have to cut the bolt to length and what have you. I think that is my way forward. So I think we've worked it out. We're going to make a tapered wedge to go on the top. So what are we going to make it out of? That's handy. A piece of EN8 bar. And it's 45 diameter. It's probably inch and three quarter. But that'll do to start with. We know we need at least 8 mil. So I cut, uh, let's say... Give ourselves a bit to play with, 10, 12, 13, 14 mil off it. Ah, note to self, buy some new clips, be a parting tool. We'll have to use a high speed steel. Hi there, and welcome to Age Workshop. As the title suggests, this is going to be a beginners hi there and welcome to Aids workshop as the title suggests this is going to be an improvement as to how you adjust the angle on the compound slice slice okay let's talk about the cam itself um, basically and it's going to be an eccentric circle on the end of my what well, I'm calling this the cam an eccentric in well, try again eh? but as to what you'd like to see feel free to comment below once again thank you so much for watching uh, yeah and for all the support I've had so far and if you're new don't forget to help can you hear that bollocks hi there and welcome to AIDS workshop Hi there and welcome to Wade's Workshop. Today we're going to be machining and fitting an ER32 chuck to fit onto my Walco W1A. What the hell? Hi there. Hi there. So while we're on the subject of lubrication, my wife tells me I don't drink enough water. Well, I tell her I drink plenty of water. It's just I tend to choose to have mine with malt, wheat, barley, that sort of thing in it. Um, usually called Foster's water, something like that, or Carling water, anyway. So, I've been given this bottle, which has got 700 mifty, mifty fill. No, 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 no. Seven. I'll do one more of those. Should be the last one of the end clips. I don't know where I am. Bollocks. Ah, oh, bugger. Ah, oh, well, set it all up again. <laughs>